Hi guys, it's Katie from Yarn Society. Today we're gonna make this adorable blue bird. You can customize this bird in any color. You can add eyelashes, a flower necklace. You can even add a little nest for it to sit in. I'm gonna include the free pattern links below. And since we're not making the nest together, I'm also gonna include that links you can grab on yarnsociety.com. For supplies, you will need two different colors of yarn. Here I have We Are Knitters the Cotton. This is a DK weight yarn, but if you wanted to use worsted weight yarn, feel free to do that as well. For the DK yarn, I'll be using a D 3.25 millimeter crochet hook, but feel free to use an E with your worsted. We're also going to grab two stitch markers, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, some polyfill stuffing. I do have two 9mm safety eyes here, a few pins for assembly, and then if you'd like to make the nest for the bird, grab some bulky yarn. This is a Lion Brand Woolies, and then I'll be using a J6mm crochet hook for the nest. If you want to add a special flower to the bird's neck or to her head, you could use a third color, and this is also a DK yarn but feel free to use worsted as well. Okay guys, we're gonna get started with the head and we are gonna start out with six single crochet into a magic circle. So grab your yarn, your hook, and a stitch marker and you can go ahead and do the magic circle however you'd like, but I'm gonna show you how we can start off without a magic circle just in case you're a beginner. So we're gonna start out with a slip knot. I'm gonna leave a long tail I'm gonna wrap the yarn around two fingers. I'm gonna hold the tail with my ring finger and then I'm gonna push the back piece to the front. I'm gonna pull up on that piece of yarn and this will make our slip knot. You can adjust that tail by pulling on it. And what we'll do is we'll insert our hook and then tighten that tail. You can get set up with your yarn and we are gonna make two chains. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through, and then we're gonna yarn over and pull through once again. We are going to make six single crochet into our second chain from the hook, so it's right here. We're gonna insert our hook underneath the top of that chain, yarn over, pull through. You'll have two loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over and pull through again. That is our first single crochet. We're gonna insert our hook back into that same chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through again. This will be our second single crochet. So we're gonna do this again. We're gonna yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through. This is single crochet three, single crochet four, five, just counting there. And then we'll make our sixth and last single crochet into the loop. From here, we can just tighten up that middle loop. Okay, so we're just gonna count our stitches here. They look like V's. This is one stitch, two, three, four, five, and six. And that little bit there is just the start of our slip knot. So now what I'd like to do is place a stitch marker. I place mine in the last stitch of the round, but if you're used to placing it in the first stitch, feel free to do what you're most comfortable with. For round two, we're going to increase in the first stitch, and then we're gonna make a single crochet into the next stitch. So in order to make an increase, we are gonna make two single crochet into the same stitch. So this is single crochet one. Going into the same stitch, make another single crochet. That is our first increase. We're gonna move over and do one single crochet. So now we're gonna repeat, we're gonna make an increase in the next stitch. This is our second single crochet. And then we're gonna just to make a simple single crochet into the next stitch. Repeat this one more time with your third increase. So we're gonna do single crochet one, single crochet two, and then make a single crochet in your last stitch. Here I'm gonna change my stitch marker to the last stitch of the round, and then I'm gonna start round three. I'm gonna tighten up my magic circle. 
or just a circle. <laughs> if it's magic or not, I'm not sure. Um, so this is round three. We're gonna increase in our first stitch and then we're gonna single crochet in each of the next two stitches. And we're gonna repeat this three times around. So this is our first increase, single crochet one, single crochet two, and then we're gonna put a single crochet in the next two stitches. So here is our first single crochet, move over, make our second single crochet. So now we're gonna do our second increase Then we have single crochet one, move over and do single crochet two. Here's our third increase. And then finish off with your last two single crochet. You'll be finishing with the stitch with your stitch marker. So go ahead and change your stitch marker. For round four, we're gonna increase in the first stitch single crochet in the next stitch. We're gonna repeat this six times around. So we're kind of going back to what we already did, but we're gonna increase the time. So this is increase one, single crochet one, increase two, single crochet one, increase three, single crochet one, increase four, single crochet one, increase five, single crochet one, and then make our last increase. And then make your last single crochet into that stitch. For round five, we are gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two stitches. And we're gonna do this six times around. Okay, so we are going to increase one. Single crochet one move over and single crochet two. Increase two. Here is single crochet one. Sorry about that. And two. And then we have increase three. One. And two. Increase four, one, and two, and then increase five, single crochet one, and single crochet two, and increase six, and then end with your two single crochet. From here, we're gonna change our stitch marker to the last stitch of the round. And for round six, we are gonna increase in the first stitch, and then we're gonna make a single crochet in each of the next three. We're gonna do this six times around. So we're gonna do our first increase here. Then we're gonna do single crochet one, move over, do single crochet two, Move over and do single crochet three. Then we have our second increase. And then we're gonna do our three single crochet. Here is our third increase. Then we have three single crochet, one, two, and three, then we have our fourth increase. Single crochet one, two, and three. Then we have our fourth increase here. 
Elisa hair. <laughs> Can never crochet without a hair, I swear. Then we have single crochet one, two, and three. And then we're gonna have our last increase and then end with your three single crochet. Okay, we're gonna change our stitch marker. Real quick, I'm just gonna count my rounds. I have round one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we'll be moving on to round seven. Sometimes I just like to count to make sure I'm on the right track. So for round seven, we're gonna increase in the first stitch and we're gonna single crochet in the next four. We're gonna do this six times around. So we have increase one, and then single crochet in the next four stitches. Here is our second increase. Single crochet in each of the next four. Then we have our third increase. So now I have single crochet one, two, three, and four. Then we'll make another increase and then make your four single crochet. Okay, here we're on our fifth increase. Then we have four single crochet. Here is our sixth increase, and then end with your four single crochet. Okay, I'm going into my last stitch. I'm going to change my stitch marker to the last stitch of the round, and then for round eight, we are going to increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next five stitches. Increase one, single crochet one, two, three, four, and five, and then we will make a second increase. Make five single crochet. Here is our third increase. Make five single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, and then a fourth increase. Make five single crochet. Here is our fifth increase. Make five single crochet. And then here is our sixth increase and finish off with five single crochet. Go ahead and change your stitch marker to the last stitch of the round. And here is our top of our head. We're having this little point here. 
From round nine through 14, we are going to single crochet into each stitch around and with a total of 42 stitches. So I highly recommend that you count all of your stitches to make sure that you have 42. And if you are a beginner, I definitely recommend counting for every round, pausing the video and counting because you don't want to find a mistake nine rounds later. That's a real bummer. <laughs> so here, continue crocheting all the way around if you want to mark your stitch, you can make a few single crochets of the round and then you can mark that stitch of round nine with another stitch marker. This way when you continue crocheting, you don't have to count from the beginning. So I'm just going to single crochet all the way around and I'll show you once we get to round 10 how easy it is for you to see and count. This We Are Knitters cotton yarn is really beautiful. If you get a chance to work with it, I highly recommend it. It's a super soft cotton. Sometimes 100% cotton yarn can be really rough on your hands and, and make them really hurt, but this is so soft. The yarn does split just a little bit, but we are using a small hook, and I do notice splitting a little more easier when I'm using this, a smaller hook. And feel free to use worsted weight yarn for this little guy, he'll just be a tad bit bigger, but not by much, to be honest. And this little bird looks great in all the colors. I think I did like three or four blues, and I want to try like a red next, just to see what the red would look like. I'm going to change my stitch marker. And then I'm going to do a few stitches of round 10. And then I'll show you the stitch marker magic. I can't live without stitch markers. I'm just one of those crocheters. So from here, you will count all the way up, but you'll know that the one with your red stitch marker is round nine. So when you're continuing to crochet, just count from nine, 10, and then you'll go all the way up to finish round 14. And we'll meet back at the end of round 14. Okay, I'm coming up on the last few stitches of round 14 and I'm going to move my stitch marker to the last stitch of the round. And now for round 15, we're going to make one decrease single crochet in the next five stitches. I like to make an invisible decrease and if you don't know how to do that, I will put my video up here in the corner. But I'll also show you here how we can make an invisible decrease. What we're going to do is place our hook underneath the front loop of the first stitch and then we're going to go directly underneath the front loop of the second stitch. You're going to yarn over and pull through. You're going to have two loops on your hook and then you'll yarn over and pull through. And that's it. It's really simple um, and it's a good stitch to know for amigurumi. So now we're going to single crochet in the next five. So this is one, two, three, four, and our fifth single crochet. And now we'll place our hook underneath the front loop of the first stitch, the front loop of the second, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. So that's our second decrease. Now we have single crochet one, two, three, four, and five. And then we'll do our third decrease here. If you need to pause the video and watch the slower invisible decrease video, you can do that now. So here our single crochet. And now we're gonna place another decrease. We'll single crochet one, two, three, four, and five, and then we'll do another decrease. Single crochet in the next five. Okay, and then we'll place our last decrease here. This is our sixth decrease and end with our five single crochet.
we reached the end around 15, you can change your stitch marker. And now we're gonna change gears for a minute. So go ahead and put some slack on that working yarn. And I like to put a stitch marker so it doesn't unravel on us as we're working. And then from here, we're going to embroider on the beak. So here we have like our half head. I like to grab a pin and from here we're going to find round 12 and 13. So we're just going to count and then place our pin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So I like to place my pin. Just watch your fingers. And then I'm going to move over to round 13 and 14 which is just one row down. I like to mark those because when I am making the beak, I just like to know where I'm going to get started. Since that pin is just right below that one, I'm just not, not going to leave that there. But what I like to do is try to center where I'm going to place my beak. So I kind of look from behind where I see that edge and I try to make it somewhat centered. It's kind of hard because you haven't finished the head yet, but just do your best. Once you've marked 12 and 13 and 13 and 14, go ahead and grab your other color and we are going to leave a really long piece. I'm going to give that a snip and then I'm going to grab my yarn needle. I'm going to make a knot on the end and I'm probably going to make a double knot here. And then I'm going to grab my yarn needle and thread this piece through my yarn needle. So now we're going to move down to round 13 and 14 and I took my pin out because I wanted you to be able to see. But I am going to go from inside the head and I'm going to find a stitch inside the head near round 13 and 14. So I'm going to go underneath a stitch. I'm going to pull all the way to my knot. Then I'm going to go under, you can go under the same stitch or a different stitch. You're going to pull through and I like to have this loop on the end. I'm going to go behind my loop, pull my yarn needle through, and just make a knot on the inside of the head. This way we know everything is secure. So I'm going to insert my needle between round 13 and 14 from inside the head coming out. And now I'm going to take out that extra pin because I'm going to pull this through and we are going to go over three stitches on the row right above where our yarn is. So I'm going to start over here on the left. I'm going to pull through and then I'm going to go through the same stitch through round 13 and 14. So we're going to pull through that one and now I'm going to move over a stitch, go from front to back and pull through and then go through the same stitch around 13 and 14, pull through, and then move over one more stitch. Depending on the yarn you're using, you may not have to fill in the holes, but here, because I'm using cotton, I do. So I'm gonna go back through 13 and 14 and just try to insert my needle in between that little section that needs some yellow yarn. So here I'm going to go from right to left. I'm going to try to smush that yarn out. <laughs> and then I'm going to go back through 13 and 14. And then just fill in that last little bit here. And just try to smush that yarn down. And then we're going to go one last time, go all the way to your right, up through that stitch between 12 and 13, and then go to the end of your beak, because we're just gonna add like a horizontal line over it. And that's it, that's your beak. I'm not a fan of embroidery, I always get a little bit nervous, especially on camera, but um, it's really not that hard. Okay, so I'm going to grab a stitch on the inside of the head because I want to secure this. So I'm going to pull my yarn through. 
and I want to make a loop on the end and then you want to go behind the loop so sometimes you have to wrap your yarn the other way and then insert your needle behind the loop and this will make a knot on the inside of the head you can make another one if you'd like but I'm gonna leave it here and just snip off a little piece and then we'll just tuck that into our head from here we're gonna insert our nine millimeter eyes if you have eight millimeter 10 millimeter 11 it's not that big of a deal so just use what you have we're gonna leave one stitch open next to the beak on round 12 and 13 so leave one open and then insert your eye next to the open stitch and then do the same thing on the other side find your end then leave an open stitch and then insert your eye as long as you're happy with the placement go ahead and put on the backings of your eyes and me personally for these plastic washers i like to do two clicks i kind of like shimmy it in slowly and click one and two i don't like to click all the way to the end because i feel like the eyes can get a little wonky looking but if it does click all the way to the end don't worry about it because sometimes these washers have a mind of their own okay so his face is ready we have the beak and the eyes now we're going to continue on with round 16. for round 16 we're going to do one decrease single crochet in the next four stitches here is our first decrease and then we'll single crochet in the next four so single crochet one single crochet two single crochet three and single crochet four we'll make our second decrease and then four single crochet one, two, three, and four. This is our third decrease. And then single crochet in the next four stitches. Here is our fourth decrease. Make four single crochet. Our fifth decrease. Four single crochet. And then our sixth and last decrease end with four single crochet. Change your stitch marker. For round 17, we are going to decrease in the first stitch, single crochet in the next three stitches. Here is decrease one. single crochet one, two, single crochet three, then we'll do our second decrease, single crochet one, two, and three. Here's our third decrease, single crochet in the next three, Our fourth decrease, single crochet in the next three, our fifth decrease, single crochet in the next three, and then our final and sixth 
decrease, ending with three single crochet. Change your stitch marker. From here, we're gonna start to stuff our head. So give yourself a ton of slack and put a stitch marker if you'd like. We're just gonna grab a small amount of stuffing. We're not gonna stuff completely. We're just gonna get started. If we really pack in this head, then we're gonna get holes as we crochet. So just put in a little bit. And then what I like to do is kind of make a hole with my fingers in the middle. Because as I add in stuffing, I'm gonna add it in that middle section. I like to arrange my eyes. You just wanna make sure that the back of your eyes are going straight into your stuffing because sometimes your stuffing can make your eyes move around and kind of be at an angle. So make sure that they're straight, straight ahead. And then we're gonna move on with round 18. So we are gonna make one decrease, single crochet in the next two, and we'll be doing this six times around. Here is our first decrease, single crochet in the next two, single crochet one, single crochet two, and then we'll make our second decrease here, single crochet in the next two. You have to get used to holding your piece all over again because now we have our stuffing in there. Here is decrease three single crochet in the next two stitches. Decrease four. Single crochet in the next two. Decrease five. Single crochet in the next two stitches. And then our final decrease and single crochet in the next two. We're going to change our stitch marker and then we're going to leave some slack on our working yarn because we're going to stuff the head just a little bit more. We're going to stuff slowly as we go only because we don't want to add holes in our work. So we're just going to go slow. So add a little bit more polyfill to that middle hole. And then make sure that you're able to kind of smoosh your piece so that it's not gonna hinder you from doing your stitches. Okay, we're gonna move on to round 19. We're gonna decrease in the first stitch, single crochet in the next. We'll be doing this six times around. So we're just gonna alternate with a decrease and a single crochet. Here's our first decrease, single crochet, another decrease, and then a single crochet. So go ahead and continue the decrease and single crochet until the end of the round. We're gonna finish up our last stitch here. Give yourself a lot of slack on your working yarn and just add a little bit more stuffing. Okay, I feel like that's enough stuffing for now. So I'm gonna place my hook back and if you haven't changed your stitch marker, you can do that now. And we're gonna start with round 20. 
In round 20, we are going to increase now. We're gonna increase in the first stitch and we're gonna single crochet in the next three stitches. We'll only be doing this three times around. So go back to doing your increases, which is two single crochet. Then we'll single crochet one, single crochet two, and single crochet three. We'll make a second increase. single crochet, oops, our first single crochet, second, and third, and then we'll end with our last increase and three single crochet. We're going to change our stitch marker and for round 21 we're just going to single crochet in the next 15 stitches so just make sure you have 15 stitches and single crochet all the way around finishing up round 21 we're going to change our stitch marker and for round 22, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two. And we'll be doing this five times around. So we are, our neck part is done, and now we're starting to increase to make the body. So we'll increase in our first stitch, and then we'll single crochet one, and single crochet two. We'll make our second increase, single crochet one in two, our third increase here, single crochet one and two, and then an increase four. single crochet one and two and then our fifth increase and ending with two single crochet moving on to round 23 we're going to increase in the first stitch single crochet in the next three stitches We'll be doing this five times around. So here's our first increase and then single crochet in the next three. So I'm gonna let you do one increase, single crochet in the next three, all the way around. our last single crochet of the round we can change our stitch marker for round 24 we're going to do the same thing just adding on another single crochet we're going to increase in that first stitch single crochet in the next four so here is increase one single crochet one two three and four, we have increased two, and then single crochet in the next four, and then repeat that sequence.
Okay, we're gonna change our stitch marker from round 25 through 28. We are gonna single crochet in the next 30 stitches. So just make sure that you have 30 stitches before you start crocheting your next few rounds. And then if you'd like to mark the round like we did before, feel free to do that as well. Okay, here I'm reaching the last stitch of round 28. We did all our single crochets. I'm gonna change my stitch marker. And from here, I'm gonna give myself a lot of slack. So we're just gonna stuff a little bit before we start to close the body. So if you need to add a little bit more to your head, feel free because you have a little hole in there. And then we just wanna stuff our neck enough so that it doesn't have like a floppiness going on. So just stuff a little bit for your neck and then you can stuff a little bit into your body, but don't overstuff because then it becomes hard to hold the body as we decrease. Okay, I'm happy with my stuffing, so I'm gonna insert my hook back into my working yarn. And for round 29, we're gonna make one decrease, single crochet in the next four, and we'll be doing this five times around. So we have our first decrease, then we're gonna make four single crochet, this is one, single crochet two, three, and four, then we have decrease two, single crochet one, two, three, and four. <clears throat> then we have decrease three, single crochet one, two, three and four and then we have another decrease single crochet one two three and four then we have our last decrease in our last four single crochet Okay, here is our last stitch. We're gonna change our stitch marker. Only a few more rounds to go. I know it gets a little tiring at this point. We're gonna keep going. So for round 30, we're gonna decrease in the first stitch, single crochet in the next three. Our first decrease, single crochet one, two, and three. Then we have decrease two, single crochet one, two, and three. And then I'll let you continue counting from here with one decrease, single crochet in the next three. Okay, round 31, we're gonna decrease in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two. Here is our first decrease. Single crochet one, single crochet two, decrease two, single crochet one and two and then go ahead and make your decrease and single crochet in the next two all the way around.
Okay, reaching the end of this round. We are gonna add a little bit more stuffing once again, so leave yourself some slack. And grab your polyfill. and stuff in that middle hole. And we are getting to the end, so make sure that he looks good on his neck and that his head looks good. And then we'll continue on. Insert your hook back into your working yarn and change your stitch marker if you haven't already. And then from here, we're gonna decrease in the first stitch, single crochet in the next. See, we will decrease one, single crochet in the next stitch. Then we're going to make our second decrease, single crochet in the next. Our third decrease, single crochet in the next. Fourth decrease, single crochet. And then ending with our last decrease in single crochet. Okay, we're gonna change our stitch marker and we're gonna do our last round. Woo hoo. This is our last chance to stuff, so I'm really gonna stuff this last piece here. You can use the back of your hook or they usually include like a wooden stick in your stuffing. So I like to make the body look a little bit pudgy. So just stuff until you are happy with the look. I think I like him at this point, so I am going to just continue on. I'm gonna place my hook back into my yarn, and for round 33, we're gonna decrease all the way around. So we're gonna make five decreases. We have decrease one, two, three, four, and our last decrease. Okay, so I'm gonna take my stitch marker out for good. I'm gonna leave a long tail. And then we're gonna fasten off. You can fasten off by yarning over and pulling that tail all the way through. Grab your yarn needle and thread it into your remaining yarn tail, and we're gonna close up this hole here. So I like to count my stitches backwards so I can see them better. So I have here one, two, three, four, and five. So here's my fifth stitch. Looks a little bit hidden, so you might, that's why help, counting backwards helps. What we're gonna do is place our yarn needle behind that front loop, and we're gonna pull our yarn straight down. Turn your piece so your stitch is right in front of you. Put your yarn needle behind that front loop and pull down, this is two. Behind the front loop again, three. Behind the front loop is four. And then we'll have our last stitch here. That's just our fastened off bit. So here's our last stitch. And then we're gonna pull down. We are gonna close up this yarn, but we wanna make sure we watch that hole as we close our piece. So keep an eye on that hole when you close it. Then you're gonna place your yarn needle back into that hole. So here, you can see where my hole is. Then you're gonna weave your piece through and you're just gonna pull really tight on that piece. Then you're gonna smush it up and you'll have a flat bottom. I'm gonna weave my yarn back and forth until I'm happy, and then I'm just gonna snip off the end. Here is our finished little friend. He is all done. We are gonna move on to our wings next. 
We are going to start out by making the wings. We are going to make six single crochet into a magic circle. And here I'm just making that same slip knot. I'm going to insert my hook and chain two. This is that alternate way that you can do if you don't know how to do a magic circle. So we'll chain one and two. And then in the second chain from the hook, we are going to single crochet six times. So we have single crochet one, two, three, four, five, and six. You can tighten up that loop and then place a stitch marker on the last stitch of your round. For round two, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next stitch and we'll be doing that three times around. That is just the beginning of your slip knot, so make sure to go into that first stitch. So here we're gonna single crochet one, and in the same stitch, single crochet two to make an increase, and then we're gonna single crochet in that next stitch. So here is increase two. Move over and make a single crochet, and then here's our third increase, and then end with one single crochet in the next stitch. You can change your stitch marker. You can tighten up that loop once again, and then we're gonna single crochet in the next nine stitches. So we're just gonna go all the way around with our single crochets. You do have to make two wings, so once you're done with this one, just rewind the video a bit and make your second wing. And then we'll just make the feet, and then we can assemble our cutie together. I wanna show you here that my piece is starting to turn in on itself, so you wanna make sure that you have the Vs facing out and that those horizontal lines are on the inside. That's considered the wrong side, so if you're if your piece starts to turn in on itself, just make sure that you have it going the right way and that you see the V's on the outside. Okay, moving on to round four, we are gonna make three single crochet in the first stitch and then we're gonna make a slip stitch in the next. We are gonna repeat that two times. So here we have three single crochet in the same stitch. There's one, two, and three. Then we're gonna move over a stitch. You're gonna make one slip stitch by going under the stitch, yarning over, pulling through, and pulling right through that last stitch. So moving over to our next stitch, we're gonna make three single crochet into that same stitch. Here's our second, here's our third, and then move over a stitch and make a slip stitch. Insert it, yarn over, pull through, pull through the stitch. Now we're gonna make a single crochet in the next five. So just do single crochets. Here's one, two, three, four, and five. Change your stitch marker. For round five, we're only crocheting in half of the stitches. So we're gonna slip stitch in the first stitch. Then we're gonna make three single crochet into the next and we're gonna do that two times. So we're gonna do a slip stitch here. Then we're gonna make three single crochet into the next stitch. We're gonna repeat that one more time, make a slip stitch, and then move over and add three single crochet into the next stitch. So this is one, two, and three, and then we're gonna end with a slip stitch. So make a slip stitch into your next stitch. That one looks just a tiny bit hidden. And now we are going to make a seamless join. So from here, you're gonna leave a long piece of yarn and you're gonna cut that piece. Instead of fastening off, all you're gonna do is pull that piece of yarn straight through with your hook. Go ahead and grab your yarn needle and thread your yarn through. 
And what you're going to do is you're going to pull your yarn over and see where your last stitch was, which is right here. You're going to move over one stitch to the left. You're going to insert your needle under both loops and you're going to pull that through. Then you're going to move over to the right, which is your last stitch that you made, and you're going to go right down the middle of the stitch and you're going to pull that through. And that just makes like a faux stitch, giving it a more cleaner finish. So you want to weave in your yarn so that the weaved in part ends up on the outside. And this is so that we can attach it easier. So this part can get a little tricky. You just want to weave the best you can so that your tail is hanging on the outside of your wing. We're going to aim towards the middle of our wing. I really had to use my strength here to get this through. Um, you can also use a sharp needle if you'd like, but try to get your tail to end at the middle of the back of your wing. And now because our wing is going to be open, we do have to weave in this end, which is a bit of a pain in the butt, but it's something we have to do. So do the best you can to weave in that magic circle end. Okay, we're gonna take out our stitch marker and then I'll show you how the wing will look. Half of it's gonna be meeting in the middle and then you'll have this pretty little ridge on the end. And I'll show you on my finished bird that this is how the wing will be attached. That's why we had the tail hanging because the wing's actually gonna look open. So go ahead and make a second wing and then we will meet back to make the feet. We're gonna start out by making the feet. Grab your contrasting color and we are gonna start by making five single crochet into a magic circle. So I made my slip knot. I'm gonna chain two. And in the second chain from the hook, I'm gonna single crochet five. This is two three, four, and five. I'm gonna tighten up that loop. I'm gonna place a stitch marker on my last stitch of the round. And then for round two, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next four. So in that first stitch, we're gonna make two single crochet. Here's our second single crochet. And then we're just gonna make a single crochet in each of the next four stitches. This is a super simple feat because there's only three rounds. Okay, you can tighten up that loop once again and then you can change your stitch marker. And here, once again, because we're working with such small stitches, your piece might turn in on itself. So just make sure to turn it out. For round three, we're just gonna single crochet in the next six stitches. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're gonna leave a long tail for attaching and cut that off. And I'm just gonna fasten off by yarning over and pulling all the way through. Just tug that end, take out your stitch marker, and you can just tuck in this piece here. If it's too long, just go ahead and cut it off and then just tuck it in. There'll be no stuffing for the feet. And then from here, you can either leave your piece open or close it. I tend to just close my pieces shut but since this is so small, I'm not going to do that on this piece here. Go ahead and stop the video and make one more foot and then we'll get together for assembly. Guys, I'm so proud of you. We're almost, almost done. So at this point, we're just going to assemble the wings and the feet. Grab some pins because those will be really helpful and your yarn needle and we'll get started. I'm going to use my pattern as a reference guide. So here I say to attach the wings to the body between round 23 and 24 
and I'm just gonna go ahead and count myself to find round 23 and 24. I'm gonna place my pin between 23 and 24, and then I'm gonna count down and try and find 25 and 26. So in my pattern, that's what it says. I'm gonna place my wing here and just see how it looks. If you mark those stitches and it just does not look right to you, place your wings wherever they look right on your bird. These are just a reference guide. So I'm just gonna go over on the other side and add some pins following along. And then I'm gonna just kinda eyeball it and see where the wings look best. I wanna mention that if you don't wanna attach these wings because they're open, you can just grab some fabric glue. Um, my Elmer's looks pretty beat up, but it still works really well. And you can actually just glue this bird on. If you're giving it to a child, you might wanna attach it with the yarn because they might be slobbering on it a bit or roughhousing with it, so it might come off. But if you're, if you're gifting it to an older child or an adult, glue, I have no shame in using some glue. It makes things a lot easier, especially on these smaller pieces. But for the video, I am gonna attach the wing. I do wanna say though, after I attached the wings and the feet, I did give a little dab of glue just to kind of keep things from moving around. Okay, so I'm gonna position both of my wings just to get an idea of where I like it, and then I'm gonna show you how I attach. Okay, I have to admit this wing is a little awkward to attach because we wanna keep it open. So I'm gonna show you my crazy way here. So insert your tail into your yarn needle, and what I did was I went in between a stitch of the body as you can see here, I went underneath and I grabbed a stitch and then I went through a stitch of the wing just on the one side up through the back so that I could grab a stitch in the back of the wing. And this was giving me real trouble, but I did it. Then I'm gonna move my pin in between round 23 and 24. I'm gonna grab another stitch of the body and then I'm gonna go up through the back of the wing, grabbing another stitch from behind. In order for this, the yarn to not show through the other side of the wing, you kind of have to weave your yarn, or weave your yarn needle through the back of the wing. And I hope I, you can see that here. And that's why it's really tough to get the yarn needle through because you're weaving it in such a small spot. So use your muscles. Really took me a while to get this. And then I was thinking I should have used a smaller needle. So if you have like an embroidery needle, feel free to use that. So here I'm just gonna really tighten this up. And two stitches was all I did because I did use a dab of glue at the end just to keep it in place. I only used two, but if you feel like you need to add more, feel free. In order to keep this in place, I wanna make a knot. So I'm gonna grab a stitch of the body just going underneath a piece of yarn here. I'm gonna pull that all the way through and I'm gonna get this loop and then I'm gonna go behind the loop, insert my needle and just pull here. If it's a little loose, don't worry about it. You're just gonna weave that yarn right next to where you made it and it'll pull it right in. So you won't even see that. It's just to make sure that that knot stays in place. So just weave your yarn through the body and we'll finish up the other side. Okay, moving on to the other side, I'm just gonna grab my tail, weave it in through my yarn needle. So between round 23 and 24 is where I had my pin and I'm just gonna grab a stitch there of the body and then I'm just gonna weave it through the back of my wing. I just want to peek and make sure that we're kind of on the same level here. It's the worst when you attach something and then you look and it's like completely wonky. I'm going to go through my round 25 and 26 and then I'm going to go up through a few stitches in the back of my wing. 
If you don't like the look of the wings open, you can glue them shut or you can sew them shut before you put them on the body. It's really not that big of a deal. So I'm just making sure that my wings look about the same and I'm happy with it. So I'm going to attach the back with a knot. I'm gonna grab a piece of yarn in the back of the wing on the body. I'm gonna pull through and there's my loop and I need to go behind my loop so wrap it around and pull it all the way through. Remember, don't worry if it's a little loose. You're gonna weave your yarn right next to where you made the, the knot and just pull that through and then weave your yarn through a few times. Okay, so our wings are attached. Just to give you another look at my guy that's already finished, I'd added a little bit of glue, not much. So everything is still really movable, but he kind of stayed in the spot that I liked it in. Okay, so we're gonna move on to attaching the feet. Okay, we're going to finish off by attaching the feet. My pattern says to attach the feet at round 31 of the body, but really just eyeball it. I would just pin the feet in place, stand the bird up, and just see which way looks best to you. And just secure those feet and move on by attaching. I already have my yarn in my yarn needle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a stitch of the body and I usually like to go a little bit underneath where my foot is so that the yarn is hidden. And what you need to do is go underneath both stitches so that you have four loops and just pull that all the way up. Then you're gonna move over a bit. You're gonna put the needle through a stitch of the body. And here, I'll show you here. And then you're gonna put it underneath both stitches going underneath four loops total. So then you can pull that up. Oh, I totally lost my yarn, so let me get that back in here. And these are pretty small, so sometimes the smaller the, the piece, I feel like is harder to attach. So if you wanna glue these pieces on, I will not judge you. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull through that whole stitch. I'm struggling with my yarn and then I'm going to go through one more stitch. So I am going to go a little bit closer. So I'm going to go underneath the stitch of the body and then go through four loops of that foot. From here, I just attached three sections and now I'm just going to weave in my ends. You can make a knot at the end to keep it in place or you can weave in your ends really well. Moving on to my other foot, I have my yarn needle attached already. I'm gonna go underneath the stitch of the body. I'm gonna go directly underneath where I want my foot to be. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of frame here. Okay, so I'm gonna go underneath the stitch of the body and then I'm gonna go up through four loops. That's two whole stitches of the foot once again. I'm gonna move over and grab a stitch of the body, and then grab a stitch of the foot. And then I will go in one last time through my foot. You can make a knot here to secure it, or you can just weave in your yarn into the body really well. Here I'm just gonna weave in my last bits of yarn and then I will just cut off all the ends. So there you have it, your feet are attached. You can add a rosette flower. I'm gonna leave the link up here in the right and also in the description box below. And then I also have the pattern for the nest that's also in the description box below. So if you'd like to make that, that was what our um, extra bulky yarn was for. Thank you guys for sticking through this crochet along with me. I hope you love Blue the Bird as much as I do. If you like this crochet along, please subscribe to my channel for weekly crochet tutorials and crochet alongs. And for free crochet patterns, please go to yarnsociety.com.